in this lecture we are going to see the concept of perspective process models so remaining process models or uh, concurrent process model and evolutionary process model in evolutionary process model uh, spiral model and prototyping models are there so we will start with evolutionary model so it is a combination of iterative and incremental model of software development life cycle so in this uh, by using evolutionary model uh, it the it, uh, it is used to breaking down of the whole work a large work into the smaller module or chunks it is called as chunks and they are giving some priority to the modules or chunks and then delivering those uh, single modules or unit chunks to the customer one by one if the number of chunks or modules are high then uh, the number of deliveries made to the customer is also high so the main advantage of by using customer uh, uh, evolutionary model is that the customer confidence increases as, uh, as the customer constantly gets quantifiable goods or services from the beginning of the project and also this model allows for changing requirements from the customer so what are the applications of evolutionary model it is used in large projects and uh, it is commonly used when the customer wants to start using the core features instead of waiting for the full software if the customer needs a uh, initial version or uh, initial product in the sense instead of waiting for the whole software then we are going with evolutionary model and it is also used in object oriented software development so there are uh, two advantages first one the user get a chance to experiment a partially development system because by using evolutionary model the software analyst can develop the partial product only so the user get a chance uh, to receive the partial product from the company or software engineers and also it reduce the error because we are going to deliver only the core product or core module uh, we can't um, deliver the whole product by using evolutionary model so it reduces the error so there is some disadvantages it is very hard to divide the problem into uh, number of versions which means uh, it is very hard to divide the whole uh, problem or program into number of small chunks that is also one of the disadvantages so there are two models uh, in evolutionary process model one is spiral model and second one is prototyping model so what is spiral model it was initially proposed by bohem uh, the person name is bohem and it is also an evolutionary software process model it is a combination of iterative and incremental model in the last lecture we saw about uh, iterative model and it iter in um, incremental model so both the combination is coming under evolutionary process model so by using spiral model the software is development in the series of increment incremental fashion we know that what is incremental model so it is the diagrammatic representation of spiral model you can uh, see that there are four uh, parts one is object identification and the second one is evaluation third one is product development and the final one is next phase planning so uh, it is a spiral model in the sense uh, because it is a combination of incremental and iterative fashion so you can um, see that uh, the diagram in the form of spiral right so which means uh, initially the one circle have to be performed after the again the second circle after the third circle which means it is incremental and iterative fashion repeated iteration means repetition so the same process have to be repeated at multiple times so that's why it is in the form of spiral model right the same process have to be repeated for each and every phase requirements analysis design coding testing and uh, maintenance so here each cycle in the spiral is divided into four parts objective setting risk assessment and deduction development and validation and planning objective setting is nothing but uh, we have to identify the purpose of uh, purpose of uh, each cycle uh, so what type of product have to be developed for each cycle that is a purpose after that they have to be identify the risk what type of risk have to be uh, encountered in each and every phase 
then uh, then only they can get some knowledge to reduce from that risk after identifying and resolving risk they have to develop the product and uh, followed by performing validation that is testing and finally they have to be planning after that the project is reviewed and reviewed by the software team to deliver the product and application of spiral model it is required uh, to be frequent and it is suitable for large project if the requirements are unclear and uh, complex then we are going with spiral model actually in every model uh, we are seeing uh, we have seen that uh, in that application model uh, the requirements are well defined and requirements are very easy to understand but for spiral model if the requirements are unclear and complex then we are going with the spiral model and when changes uh, may require at any time by using spiral model we can change the requirement part at any time and it is suitable for large and high budget projects and uh, so there is some advantages uh, it uh, involves high risk analysis because you can see that the second uh, phase risk assessment and deduction so before going the development part they have to identify the risk and resolve that so here it is the main advantage high amount of risk analysis so they can use uh, large and um, mission critical project so what are the disadvantages it can be costly because uh, it involved in high risk analysis and if the requirements are unclear and complex and a larger project so default uh, the cost is very high and uh, to analyze the risk and resolve the risk uh, they needing the they are need need in the uh, process of highly uh, expertised people then only that people can um, identify the risk and resolve the risk this is also one of the disadvantage and it does not work well for smaller projects because there are multiple process models are there so for smaller projects we are going with any model uh, comparatively another model spiral model is little more uh, difficult so it is not suitable for it is not uh, suitable uh, no, uh, not in the sense it is it does not work well for smaller projects and the final one is prototype model uh, it requires that before carrying out the development of actual product a working prototype of the system should be built a prototype is the initial version of the software so in the word sense prototype model it is the initial version of the model so the software team have to develop the some more initial model uh, so then uh, they have to deploy to the customer if the customer is satisfied in the sense then only the software analyst uh, can develop the whole product so it is a diagram uh, format of prototype model so in initially they can uh, gather the requirement after that uh, they can take some uh, take some quick decision because then only they can develop the initial version or initial design of the software so after taking the decision they can uh, develop some prototype model so after developing the prototype they can again perform uh, requirement analysis refine those requirements then um, they can they can give the prototype to the customer for evaluation after acceptance by the customer then only they are going with the design part implementation part testing and finally the maintenance so the same process but between requirement gathering and design they can take some decision and after that build prototype then that prototype was given to customer after uh, the evaluation is done by the customer then uh, they are again refining those requirements after that they can develop um, after that uh, the customer have to be accepted then only they can uh, they are going with the design part so these are the steps to be performed in prototype model requirements gathering quick decision build a prototype acceptance by um, customer prototype refinement and finally the software product or project so what are the disadvantages of prototype model it it is used to reduce the risk of incorrect user requirements because um, after requirements gathering if the software uh, team directly going with uh, design in the sense they can miss any requirements but here after requirements gathering they can uh, develop some prototype then uh, the prototype have to be um, delivered to the customer so by uh, seeing those initial design the customer can easily identify the risk and faults after uh, those indication was coming from uh, customer the software analyst can easily change the requirements then uh, they can develop the full uh, correct product 
so it is uh, reduce the risk and uh, this prototype model good when the requirements are changing or uncommitted and it is very visible to the customer in each and every phase it is used to support early product marketing and also it reduce the maintenance cost because initially it reduce the risk so in default it should reduce the maintenance cost and here the errors can be detected in the very earlier manner so the testing process is very easy these are the disadvantages actually in prototype model uh, there are multiple uh, disadvantages compared to another uh, process model it is very unstable it require extensive customer collaboration because uh, in this model the software team have to be collaborated with the uh, customer in every time then only they can easy uh, then only they can uh, uh, easily develop the initial design it is very difficult to know how long the project will uh, last and also it is easy to fall back into the code and fix without proper requirement analysis and prototyping tools are expensive because it is a prototype model prototype is nothing but initial design before delivering the final product so it is very expensive and uh, for delivering the initial design that is prototype uh, special tools and automatic tools techniques are required to build a prototype it is also one of the disadvantage and it take uh, more time it is a time consuming process and the final one is concurrent model actually uh, perspective process model is over waterfall model a v model uh, incremental model iterative model rad model rapid application model application development model and final one is evolutionary process model uh, it having a spiral and prototyping model so these all models are coming under perspective process model and the final one model is concurrent model so it is also called as concurrent engineering it allows the software team to represent iterative and concurrent elements of any of the process model uh, described in the previous lectures right so this uh, concurrent model is used to describe the elements of uh, those perspective process models right in the following uh, figure provides the representation of one software engineering activity within this modeling activity the whole activity can be named as modeling activity right so consider this diagrammatic representation uh, earliest in the project the communication activity has completed its first iteration and uh, they have to be waited in awaiting changes state so the whole modeling activity includes while initial communication was completed now it goes to the uh, next state under development state right so initially uh, the project have to be wait in inactive state so after uh, receiving the requirements or other uh, uh, details then they are going with the under development process or under development state if the customer indicate that the changes in requirements must be made then the modeling activity moves from under development to another state that is awaiting changes state so concurrent modeling defines a series of events that will trigger transitions from one state to another state for each of the software engineering activities or actions or task so these all about concurrent engineering model and the final one is capability maturity model it is named as cmm there are five levels the first level is initial level second level is repeatable third level is defined fourth level is mana managed level fifth level is optimizing level so initial level is nothing but here um, uh, there are few process some of the process have to be defined and uh, individual effort efforts have to be taken to improve uh, the so improve the process to deliver the software product repeatable means here uh, they can track the cost schedule and functionality uh, to establish the software product and the level 3 is defined here the process is standardized and documented and have to be followed and fourth one is managed here both the software process and product are understood and controlled using detailed measures which are taken by the software analyst team and final one is optimizing optimizing means improvisation so they have uh, using some mechanism um, which are used to plan and uh, have to make uh, some changes in the implementation 
part so these five levels are called as capability maturity model c m m initial repeatable defined managed and optimizing so from this uh, the perspective process models are over